Hey, Clee, what are we talking about? Well, that's a good question. Today we're talking. <laughs> Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi. Hello, all you awesome humans, and welcome to the studio. Today we're going to be talking about something that I suspect all of us creatives have wrangled with at some point or another. Is creating art selfish, and are you therefore a narcissistic, meritless stain upon society if creating art is what you choose to do with your life? Spoiler alert. I don't think so, but I'm a full-time artist, so take my wretched self-aggrandizing opinions and draw your own conclusions. So how many times have you had this existential crisis about whether you're selfish or selfless in the creation of art? I mean, I don't really so much anymore because I feel like everything I do is just, you a know. A gift of it's a gift, a gift to the know. earth. It's a gift. Great. So there are some of us who just don't suffer this question. Yeah. Everything <laughs> I do is a gift. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Art can be of great service for the artist creating it, but how does it serve an experiencer of the art or the greater good? This video is in response to a question from Alan York, which I'm paraphrasing because Alan is a thinking ass mofo and his question is is a long one. How does art heal? I've been reading about art therapy and all sorts of ways that creating art is a healing process, so I get that. But what I'm not finding are discussions on how the viewing of art is healing. We've been told that we should serve others. If I'm making art and it does happen to heal, how do you think it does so? How does putting my art out in the world serve others? If, as an artist, I have a statement being made by my art, and if that statement is not going to be to goad political conflict, and if I'm also not in the group hug crowd, then I have no real idea how exactly my artwork is going to be healing, and I guess I suppose that it should be. Surely, that's better than conflict. These are awesome questions, and I've thought a lot about this subject. I've gone through many a time in my career where I felt like being an artist was a selfish act and one that I should ultimately feel very guilty for. And guess what? Some of the people closest to me felt the very same sentiments about my livelihood and had no qualms about sharing. Harsh. Even at my lowest points, y'all, those feelings never sat right with me. I've experienced too much art that impacted my life in positive ways to really believe that. And I've seen countless other people emotionally moved by art in ways that changed their lives. And I've come to the conclusion that art and the creation of art is both an act in service of self and in service to others. And that, in my opinion, is an awesome win-win. What about the people in your life, though? The people closest to me did not always feel like this was a worthwhile pursuit or that I was doing something of merit. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people in my life that, you know, were close to me and were like, what the hell do you think you're doing? Eventually, I realized that they were dumb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So most of us have a pretty good understanding of how the creation of art serves the artist, but I want to focus on how it serves others and how it serves that greater good. I should make it clear that I'm talking about art in an all-encompassing way, not strictly visual arts, but any and all art forms you can think of. So what happens when you connect with a piece of art? Art has this awesomely strange ability to snap you out of whatever mind train you were riding and into the present moment. Sometimes it holds you there, your full attention fixed on it, and sometimes it transports you into another place entirely. If you let it, art can take you on quite a journey. Like a once in the whole of the universe journey that is an exploration of your inner world through the lens of that art and an exploration of the art that can only be discovered through the lens of your inner world. No one else will ever know your exact personal experience, just like no two people can ever view the exact same rainbow, even if they're standing right next to each other. Your window, your wormhole through time and space, experiencing art is as close to actual teleportation as we might ever get. And that, my peeps, is truly an excellent adventure. I think we often overlook the simple ability to stop and appreciate something, like just the act of appreciation in of itself. Yeah. Like, well, Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like the world is all hustle, 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 busy, 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 doing this, got to do this. I remember one time, uh, the first time I had to work downtown in Chicago, right? 
And I got off the train. I took the train to work, got off the train, and I was completely and utterly astonished at how fast people walked down the sidewalk and how they completely just did not look around, did not stop for a moment. And, you know, when you're walking around in a, a in a place that is beautified there's flowers and there's views and you could see the lake and there's these tall beautiful buildings and like everything everything in chicago is very artistic and beautiful when you're in the loop mm-hmm. and like people just going from point a to point b narrowly minded without looking around and stopping for a moment and and i almost got ran over like 50 times like just because i was like wow this is cool this is beautiful i want to see this (laughs) so you might be thinking well that's cool and all but does it really matter in the grand scheme of things how important is that really i say the ways in which it matters can be as infinitely diverse as humans themselves but the following are some that i have personally experienced and by no means the sum total and here we go number one cathartic It's even in the word. Art lets you know that another person experienced, understood, and expressed something that perhaps you also experienced but maybe couldn't or didn't express. That moment of cathartic connection can open a floodgate of emotional release, especially if those feelings were previously repressed or made you feel isolated. In other words, art can help you to release your own grief, anxiety, sadness, anger, your father was moved to tears at a painting of Cuba that you did for him. Yeah. He didn't even know. The floodgates opened. The floodgates opened. I took a scene from his childhood that he hadn't seen in like 40 years and created a painting that was textured and made it feel like you were there standing in that place. And yeah, it, he started crying. So like, that's the thing. Like art is going to move people. There are so many things that we find value in because we think we're supposed to find value, like money. If it's expensive, then it's valuable, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But really, value value is whatever touches you emotionally. And I know for a fact that my art touches some people emotionally. Some people look at it and they're like, I don't care. Sure. You know, but I know that there is value out there for what I create because it's valuable to me. And thus, I know that people out there that are like-minded, it's going to be valuable to them. Number two, connection. Art has the ability to make us feel not so alone through connection with the art itself, the artist that created it, and the other people who connect with it. Think about how mutual appreciation of songs, literature, images, styles, movies, and the like can immediately signal to you that you are among your peeps, your tribe. Was it easy for me to get there, to that place, to that mindset? No. 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 Sure. I, I, that, <laughs> no. I think we all go through that. Like, I just, uh, it's only for me and I got to come up with make-believe reasons why it's uh, an altruistic thing that I am doing. But really, it's, maybe this is an oversimplification, but honestly, it's kind of the same thing as preparing a delicious meal for someone or hand sewing a garment for someone or beautifying a place in some way. Like, it's no different than any of the other ways that people contribute, yeah. in my mind. Writing a song for somebody that you love, writing a poem for somebody that you love, yeah. writing a poem for the world, uh, taking a photograph of something beautiful that you want to capture and remember forever. I mean, it all has so much value. Number three, critical thinking and perspective. Art can and often does start an inner and sometimes outer dialogue based on perceived perspectives and ideas presented by the art. Art, just like humor, does this in such an elegant way that it often bypasses our typical defenses when it comes to contrasting viewpoints. Because art does this in such a powerful and elegant way, we have seen countless works of art banned in places and time periods throughout history people are scared of art because art is powerful i think a lot of people don't understand that like what they create does have value Mm -hmm. right because they're trying to apply it into a world surrounded by people that maybe don't find value in art like we didn't have art in our house it wasn't like i grew up in a place where people were like art is important in life they didn't freaking care so of course here i am creating this thing that to them they don't it's valueless if you are just primarily focused on this is what's important in life and this and this and this and this and this. All those things might seem trivial to you, but that's because you're overlooking the amount of power that there is in those things. I mean, it's artwork, artwork, the things that make us feel stuff. 
uh, is the reason that we don't live in a gray world where every vehicle looks the same and every house looks the same and every lawn is is man- done the same and uh, we're all eating the same kind of food and everything tastes the same. There mm-hmm. is a spice and a variety of life because of the value that art and creativity bring. Number four, curiosity and awe. Art can make you feel or remind you that all things are possible. Art can bring you back to a primal childlike sense of emotion. Think awe, joy, hope. Art can take you back to an emotional state which existed before you piled on a bunch of labels, obligations, programming, autopilot functionings, and other forms of various bull garbage upon your psyche. Art can visit worlds that don't exist or that might exist but we can't physically experience them. Art can take you into the heavily speculated about singularity of a black hole and safely back out again. Just chew on that for a moment. I remember I would watch my kids. Every time they went outside or or went and did something, it was like they were experiencing it for the first time. Even if they had seen clouds, there was still this wonderment of looking at the clouds and picking out shapes and and all that stuff, or sitting there and and following a bug around and, and just being completely fascinated by it. And I love that. I love that reminder of like, this is life and it's happening right now. And you are either in complete wonder and appreciation or you're just jaded and just like, I've seen that. I've seen that. Blah, blah, blah. You know, that yeah. one's not as pretty as that one. I've seen much prettier things in the past. <laughs> like, <laughs> shut Ew. up. Number five, empowerment. Art can serve as an anchor to your personal power and the mere act of experiencing it can be a daily reminder of personal qualities that you value or that you strive for. Humans appreciate beauty and recently a lot of studies have been done on exactly how beauty in our environment affects our emotional and mental well-being and it does turn out that generally we thrive just a little bit more if we surround ourselves with beauty that we can appreciate. It even cultivates a sense of hope within us. And I really like this quote that I found on the subject uh, from an article I read. So long as we find anything beautiful, we feel that we have not yet exhausted what life has to offer. Oh, I love that. I really love that. Number six, inspiration. Art begets art. I can't tell you how many times I have experienced another human being making the sometimes life-changing decision to express themselves differently or more fully through an artistic process because they encountered a piece of art or met another artist that compelled them to do so. One of my favorite things that I've heard as far as inspiration, the idea that art begets art, came from one of our rogues, actually, in recent times. Sweet. That is the joy of our passion. It's contagious. It can be shared. And so long as there is art and artists in the world, no one's flame ever needs to fizzle out forever. Christopher J. Rhodes. Oh, I love that. That is so good. That took like all the that I was trying to say about humans inspiring other humans. He just condensed it down. That in of itself is an art form. Right? He's a wordsmith. Yeah. Yeah. Number seven, memories, reminders, and personal ties. Art is very good at connecting you with the otherwise ephemeral. Like an ethereal sort of tether, it keeps the lines of access open to connect and commune with history on the grand scale. Personal history, ancestral heritage, family ties, commemoration of love, commemoration of loss, celebration of lives lived, legacy of achievements, pivotal moments, the list is endless. It doesn't have to be grand social, political in order to matter. Often it represents one single personal thing for one person. There was a story of this guy. I remember he's talking to me and he's like, I just, you know, there's no, there's no like beauty in my life and stuff. And I was like, beauty in your life. What about the, the flowers? There, there's a set of these beautiful flowers right at the, the bottom of your stoop by your house. Like every morning that you walk out, those flowers are there. And he stopped and he looked at me. He was like, there's flowers in front of my house. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Number eight, nonverbal self-expression, or as I like to call it, what do you be about? The art you own and the art you appreciate expresses so much about you in ways that you maybe can't or don't wish to verbalize. Or maybe it would be awkward to do so as an opener, but art opens the floor for that expression. To express and be seen. To express and be understood. To express and feel powerful, capable, beautiful. It's funny because beauty has become like so uh, contradictory in recent times. Like um, whether we should place so much value on beauty or whether we should not place value on beauty. And I think my thing is like, is it superficial? Yeah. 
like, or is it deeper? Like, is it like all the marketing from the beauty campaign? Right. Like, get rid of your wrinkles now using the stream. Although, really, the photograph of this model has been airbrushed to take the wrinkles out. And that's what beauty is. Like, that's completely superficial. You've had great masters in the past talk about it and say things like, I like big butts and I cannot lie. You cannot deny it's true. <laughs> okay, so perhaps you're thinking, that was a wondrous dive into the realm of art and its intrinsic values. Or perhaps you're thinking, Clee, you utter windbag of existential rubbish. Why don't you take your ephemeral musings straight to Dante's seventh ring? But wait! There are two more bonus benefits of art that I want to share with you. These two are pretty simple, and for that reason, I think they're often overlooked and underestimated, but I think they're super good. Number nine the gift of experiencing appreciation. Art gives you with a moment to be able to stop and appreciate something, and in doing so can set an entirely different emotional tone going forward. It can change your life, set a different course for your day, or simply offer you momentary respite from autopilot. It truly is the gift that keeps on giving. A friend of mine once said, my favorite human ability is the ability to appreciate because without that ability, none of the other things in life would mean anything to us. And so cultivating that ability to feel appreciation anytime you choose to. Anytime. We get trained to look at things and measure them up against other things. Yeah. So like you're looking at two trees and you're like, well, that tree is much more beautiful than that tree. And it's like, what, what are the requirements there? Like, <laughs> how does that make sense to you? And finally, number 10, the sheer unadulterated experience of beauty, which it turns out is quite important to humans on more than a superficial level. And recent studies seem to suggest it's hugely beneficial for mental and emotional well-being, as well as overall quality of life. I think the beauty of it <laughs> nice. is nice. <laughs> to, to observe and appreciate beauty more from a, an unbiased, almost childlike perspective of to just appreciate the beauty that's all around us oh, for yeah. what it is without comparing it against anything else, just to appreciate it and let it, let it allow you to feel good. I don't personally believe that your art has to be shocking, super emotionally charged, or historical social political commentary in order to serve. I suppose, though, it depends on your definition of the word service. Here is the definition of the word service, by the way. You know I like to be thorough. Service, the act of helping or doing work for someone. If you get something out of the act of creating your art and you share that from a genuine and authentic place, however infinitely big or small those emotions and motivations may seem to you, and a person connects with your art and also gets something from it, however big or small those emotions may be for them, by my definition, your art has served. And that's my two cents as far as art's intrinsic value and how it serves the greater good. And you guys know that I feel deep down that it absolutely does. And I would love to hear from you guys. Are there intrinsic values that I've missed? How do you feel art serves others experiencing it and the greater good? Leave that in the comments section below. And a huge shout out and love to our patrons who make these videos possible. You guys are amazing and we adore you. And thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. So I guess since I'm running point on this video, uh, you should say goodbye to everyone so that they're not like, where's our goodbye oh, yeah. from Rafi? Adios. <laughs> And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Just click right over here to subscribe. <laughs> and that's it. Good day. Total awesomeness.